he, where he's got, what did it say, one of them here down. And wait for the We will never finish unless we start. Two guys got shot himself. Just a team to his sister's house outside of Zebulon. She said, I'm not having any notice. So she drove him to Zebulon and crossed him off the Walgreens. And then our guys got involved, but we figured out for sure he didn't have it here. Welcome. Glad to see everybody here this evening. It's an uh, unusually large crowd. That's good. Uh, glad to have you here the, today. Uh, the first item is the Pledge of Allegiance, so I'll ask uh, Beverly if she'll lead us in that. We stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Approval of the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion made and second. All in favor? <laughs> Motion carries. We now have public comment period. Uh, each month we uh, allow people three minutes to come up, say what's on their mind, and uh, you'll notice the lights over here, so please pay attention to the three minutes because I really don't like having to cut people off. Uh, the first is Denise Nowell. Good evening, Mayor and members of the board. On behalf of the Zebulon Chamber of Commerce and the businesses we seek to promote every day, we want to update you on just a couple of things. First is our third teacher's event, uh, teacher's first event happening later this month. As the town continues their partnership with the Chamber for Smart Growth, we continue making sure programs like these are in place as our community expands. Each year, we have a Excuse me. Each year we've been able to support our schools by connecting local businesses to the teachers who are making a difference in our community. In 2017, we started with our elementary schools. In 2018, we made a difference for our middle school teachers. This year, 
We will be impacting the high schools that serve our community. Teachers from East Wake High School, Corinth Holders High School, East Wake Academy, and Heritage Christian Academy have all been invited to pre be part of the event. We're accepting donations through August 15, and a few items that we still definitely need are dry erase markers, hand sanitizer, and rulers. And then I think you got a little flyer that tells um, some of the uh, other items that we could use. And there are also donation sites listed on that flyer. Most of you have attended the event in the past, and we invite you once again to come and meet the teachers and peruse all the great things that our businesses and the members in the community have donated. The event is Thursday, August 22nd at the Zebulon Rotary Women's Club building from 2 until 5. We look forward to seeing you there. Second, as we enter into election season for our community, the Chamber is once again preparing to connect candidates with the residents of Zebulon through the Candidates Forum. ABC 11's anchor Julie Wilson will be here to moderate. The forum will be held here in Council Chambers on Tuesday, October 15, from 6.30 until 7.30 in the evening. We're also finalizing dates for a couple of meet and greet candidates events. Um, one will be hosted by the Chamber and another will be hosted by the Zebulon Women's Club. The public's invited to all of these events and information will be on the Chamber's website, also be provided to the town so that you can update it on your website as details are confirmed. So thank you for your time, thank you for your service and for all that you do for the family that is our Zebulon community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda LaRoque. Hi, my name is Amanda LaRoque. Um, I don't have a lot of time right now to give you my background or a lot of the backstory to all of this, but I've spent the past few weeks speaking to many of the downtown business owners as I possibly could. Um, and to say that many of them are on their last lifeline is an understatement. They are, some of them are going not only month to month, but to, are on day to day, not knowing which day they're gonna have be forced to close their doors. They feel totally deflated and abandoned by this town and its leaders. Um, in the past few months, I've visited many other downtown, um, downtown, some smaller and some bigger. They were all successful because they had a vision they had a plan, and most of all, they had leadership. Um, none, none which this town seems to have at the moment. All business, in business, time is money, and many of our downtown businesses are not only out of time and not making money, but they are running out of money. They need help. They need and deserve a plan. Enough with the talk, we need immediate action, or there's not going to be anything left to build upon. And if you think it's hard recruiting new businesses now, just wait till there's nothing, not one business left down there. It's shameful that our leaders, it's shameful that our leaders have got, let it get this far and you should be embarrassed. They have put their livelihood and they put their life savings on the line. We need a plan and we need action. Thank you. Thank you. Scott Carpenter. Hi, good evening. I'm Scott Carpenter speaking for Preservation Zebulon. First, I'd like, to be, I'd like to thank all of you that were able to attend the recent uh, historic landmark celebration um, that was put on for Wake County uh, Historic Landmarks. Two of the five landmarks that were recognized this year were Zebulon landmarks, the Wake Lawn here and the E.C. Daniels House. It was fantastic um, to see those of you that were able to attend. We found it to be a great example of how the town of Zebulon can partner with Preservation Zebulon and the Wake County Historic Preservation Commission to celebrate um, the rich and beautiful history that is Zebulon. Thank you for being a part of that. Second, I'd like to give you a brief update on the Zebulon Historic District. Uh, we understand that you were given a copy of a draft letter this summer. That letter uh, was sent out on July 12th, an updated letter. It was sent to 255 property owners of 279 properties here in Zebulon. Uh, approximately 90% of those that received that letter were residents, so about 20 to 30 or 10% were businesses. Um, we're glad to be working together on uh, uh, opportunities such as this uh, to support the economic incentives that so many of your constituents um, could benefit from. Thus far, we've received only positive comments from that letter that went out, 
haven't received anything negative. And as we've continued to try to work with you to keep communications open, um, if you are hearing things, we would encourage you to um, have them get in touch with us. So thank you for that. Um, lastly, I have a couple of questions, and I know this isn't a time for um, dialogue, but maybe these could be addressed um, at some point, maybe during your comment period. One is the uh, UDO. Uh, I cannot find information on meetings on the town's website. I do see evidence of um, uh, meeting notes, but they're very vague and very sparse. So if those meetings are happening and you know, we can find out when they happen and, and uh, information like that, it would be appreciated. And uh, second, I'd like to go back to um, an item that you passed on February 4th. This was the vision statement for the Little River Corridor. We'd just like to have an update on that if there's any kind of an update. And lastly, um, the Preservation Zebulon Executive Director is here tonight, and so I would be re remiss if I don't mention that we're having a murder mystery um, dinner fundraiser coming up on Saturday, sept September 28th, and we encourage everybody to attend if they can. Um, mayor Methaney, last year at the uh, murder mystery event, um, it was the mayor that got murdered. We didn't know anything about that, but that's done and out of the way, so some someone else will have to get murdered this year. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Scott. Try to y'all. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, I am here representing Simply Blush Bridal and our connecting businesses that are beside of us. We met with Jay Moore and Mayor and Chris Ray last week um, to make sure um, that we are all on the same page and we wanna make sure that our town commissioners realize that there is a serious sewer problem behind our businesses on Vance Street. Um, we noticed that there was immediate action taken with the water problem on Gannon and we just want to make sure that that immediate action is taken with our sewer issues as well. Um, at our shop, we run anywhere from 40 to 50 um, people in and out, if not more, on Saturdays, and we operate with one restroom, and we cannot afford to have it back up. So we are asking that this be taken very seriously, uh, to not have any businesses leave our downtown area as we have already lost one due to this issue that connects to us. So I realize that y'all are gonna be talking about this at your work session. I just wanted it on your heart as it is on our heart that we too have put our savings into our businesses and it is our, our livelihood and our dream uh, to have our shop there. So we um, just want to plea with you guys to take it as serious as it is and to come up with a wonderful solution for us all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Trace. All right, we have a public hearing, SC 201701 for Eden Street. And if I can get my... Back it up. Uh, First, I'll ask for a staff report, and then I'll ask for comments from anyone here that's, that's interested. So, our hearing's open. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the board. Uh, the first item for a public hearing tonight is SC 2017-01. Um, it's the closure of a portion of N Street. You might notice that this is a 2017 request. It's been going on for approximately two years. Uh, before you tonight is two different uh, components. First of all is a public hearing to seek public comments regarding uh, the uh, final discussion regarding the potential closure of Eden Street. And the second would be to potentially adopt resolution 2010-1 for the closure or for the right of way amendment of N Street. Um, the photo on your screen is uh, the existing N Street. Uh, Wakefield Central Baptist Church is located here to the right of the screen. And then there's a private residential structure uh, to the left. It is approximately in the location of this gravel area. To provide a bit of uh, understanding the vicinity, um, you do see uh, North of Rendell located here. Um, Zebulon Elementary located here. And the section that is being proposed to close is this r highlighted red area here. 
This aerial photo shows a bit more detail, including uh, wake long townhomes um, and the Sheets gas station located right there. It is uh, not a very long portion compared to many of the streets, but it is classified as a paper street, that it, being that it has not been improved. Um, there is one parcel that uh, the only frontage that has currently on um, uh, right away is located, where's the mouse? is located right there. Um, however, one of the items uh, that was discussed in the past was to work on an agreement. Um, to provide a bit of a background of how we got here, initially the applicant proposed uh, closure of the street in March of 2017. Um, there was a discussion and a resolution brought to council for a memory or a resolution of intent to close a street that was approved on April 3rd, 2017. That was resolution 17-12, and you should have a copy of that in your packets. Um, there was a presentation done before staff to the Board of Commissioners on May 1st, 2017. During that discussion, there was some concern regarding the potential landlock parcel, as well as where the utilities, um, which are currently located in the Paper Street, how those were going to be retained. Um, the direction to staff at that time was to work with the, uh, all the property owners to make sure that there was easement, uh, a perpetual easement um, being granted to continue access to the landlocked parcel, as well as uh, utility access agreements um, for both uh, City of Raleigh Public Utilities as well as the Town of Zebulon to provide utility services um, moving forward. Um, the, uh, uh, that agreement was approved and recorded on July 11th, uh, 2019. A copy of that agreement is also included in your packet. And we're here, or we're here tonight um, for a final resolution for SC 2017-01, which includes uh, adoption of the proposed uh, resolution. In terms of utilities, this is the Wakeland townhomes. Um, the blue lines are the water lines and the green lines are the sewer lines. This is the same graphic that was provided in 2017 showing how the utilities are accessed from the Paper Street, Eddins Street located here onto the site as well as a utility schematic that was provided by the applicant. Um, this is also in your uh, packet uh, showing the, uh, the location of a sanitary sewer line running along here. This is that existing gravel drive that goes up into the parking lot area for uh, Wakefield Central Baptist. Um, staff does recommend approval following of the proposed resolution following a public hearing tonight, um, subject to <clears throat> the conditions that were illustrated in the agreement that was recorded by the Wake County Recorder of Deeds in book uh, 017581, pages 01788 through 01794. And I'm available if you have any questions, and the applicant is also present if you have any questions. Okay. Questions from the board? Is there any lots back there, Michael? Any lots on that um, street? There is one lot here. It's not real easy to see, but this is a, a, a single standalone parcel that would continue to have access through an easement. And our current uh, code of ordinance does allow for um, a parcel to have frontage on an easement versus a dedicated public right of way. So this would not create a non conforming based on the existing regulations. Other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, anyone wishing to speak in favor of this? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, commissioners. Uh, I don't have much to add except to say that uh, what we are closing actually was dedicated by the recording of a plat in 1885. That's when the town of Wakefield was thought it was going to be, at that time, that's when the town of Wakefield was incorporated, and <clears throat> they anticipated that the railroad was going to come through the town. And then when the railroad instead ended up going through where it is located now, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the town of Wakefield withdrew, through the legislature withdrew this right to be a town, but they left all these streets in place. Most of the streets in the town of Wakefield have never been actually opened, but this had to be one that was open basically just to serve utility easements and whatever. Uh, as part of this project, we have been 
our firm has closed several streets by agreement that were also part of this parcel. And the one holdup that we had with this was we did have the one parcel that would not have access if we did close in streets. And we finally got, we, everyone got together. And we came to an agreement to uh, conserve an easement for uh, that parcel and therefore it's not going to be a non-conforming use. So we have, to my knowledge, we have met all requirements of the statute. Thank you, Mark. Uh, questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Anyone in opposition? Okay, and finally, anyone not necessarily for or against, but you have something to say about it. Okay, we'll close the public hearing and uh, this will come up later in our agenda for, for action. Okay, we jump to old business. Sydney <coughs> Creek. Mayor Matheny, don't forget consent agenda, please. Pardon? Consent agenda. Yep, I jumped over it, didn't I? <laughs> consent agenda. <laughs> Good. I make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? All right. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> Sydney Creek. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the board. This zoning map amendment was heard at the July 11th uh, joint public hearing. The uh, applicant is Stocks Engineering. The parcel size is 214 acres, and the existing zoning is residential 20 uh, in the town's ETJ. The request before you is to rezone to residential 10. Uh, just a kind of a refresher is uh, the 214 acres is, has two street frontages. One street frontage is on NC 39, just south of 264. And in the southwestern portion of the property, it has frontage on Chambly Road. As previously stated, current zoning is R20. You have some uh, industrial zoning to the adjacent north. This is the future land use map. This is currently um, when the comprehensive plan was adopted, it was outside of the, the service area. Uh, this is a little case history. The, the project was submitted on April 8th. Uh, everybody within 150 feet of the property received a mail notice on May 26th. It was notified in the East Wake News on May 31st and June 7th. As I stated before, it was on the June 11th joint public hearing. Uh, planning board recommended approval. Staff had a recommendation of approval. These are just some site pictures from the site visit. This is NC 39, two lane street. This is Chambly Road, a two lane street. And then these were some uh, subdivision, uh, subdivision um, whoops, sorry, demographics that were submitted. Sydney Creek is down here in the, in the lower portion of the town limits, 234 acres and for development, um, which we have um, a development that uh, will be heard next week for 822 units on this piece of property. Um, Barrington was a recent uh, approval in two, uh, 2018, Autumn Lakes, and then Shepherd's Park. Uh, the planning board had a consistency statement that they recommended approval of RZ 2019-05 based on the consistency with the Town of Zebulon Comprehensive Plan, Zebulon Code of Ordinances, and any other official plan that is applicable. And I'm available for any questions. Questions? Uh, yeah, how, how is this going to influence the uh, location of the future uh, fire station? as far as service and that type of thing? It's, um, it's within our, uh, our service area. Um, I don't know if 
fire chief has anything to add to that. I think it, uh, Chris doesn't give us an answer there. Mr. Beck, this is this area is definitely one of those further areas from our existing station, um, and it is also remote as we look to locate a new fire station. Our, our study indicated an area somewhere in the 64 uh, NC 96 North Arundel corridor um, that is remote there as well. So this will present a challenge. Um, it, we, we basically we're doing our street analysis on a four minute travel. Um, so is it going to push the limits? It most definitely will. This is kind of that outer skirts. Um, as we see the, the street network come in that feeds it, that'll give us some more information. But um, the best information I can give you now is it, it is it is remote and it's, it's going to be difficult to reach when our, within our four minute travel goal that we've established. Okay. How would you answer that call? How would you answer to uh, that subdivision? Would you use Sham Road or would you come down? Uh, how would you do it? Quick? What's the quickest way there? It's, it's basically, I think, as we see the street layout of the subdivision, if it ends up being on, a, on the 39 side, um, all of our routing is done, quite honestly, the most quickest route um, based on GPS coordinates and that kind of thing. So those, those properties who, who are located closer to the Shamley Road side, we would definitely go Shamley Road. Um, those that are located closer to the 39 side, um, that would be our route of travel, either you know, 0264 to 39 um, or, or Shamley Road via Horton Street. Would this change uh, the possible location? Now, I know we don't have a location yet, or uh, we've, we've talked about you know, what would be ideal now. Would this change? The, the analysis that was done did incorporate future development, um, and we realized as part of that, um, looking into our crystal ball, if you will, that as the town grows, it's going to be difficult to, to continue to maintain that. Uh, I think your question is very valid. You know, do we take this subdivision and does it have a big enough effect to make us want to adjust that? That's a really good question. I don't have the answer for you tonight. But I, but just, I just wondered in case maybe we need uh, two t substations maybe instead of one big station. So, and I guess to your point, the, if you recall, one thing that, our, that we did recognize is that what we see here is going to happen more and more as the town grows outside of that core. Um, our, our consultant that we hired at the time did recommend a second station. Um, I think the 10 to 15 year range was where he gave just to, to put a placeholder and it would be to serve that more eastern part of the, of the, of the district and corporate limits. So uh, that, time, that time range may step up a little bit. That's right. right. Yes, sir. I think, I think that may be the, probably the best approach. All right. Other questions? Thank you, uh, Chief. Okay. What's your pleasure? Mead. I got another question. Oh, okay. Mead, what about? For curiosity, uh, I, I'd hate to see our police department tied up down there so far away from downtown. You know, our, our, our police department is limited anyway. What about that? How can we do it where the sheriff's department answers anything, disturbance, or anything down there? Just to make sure I'm understanding your question, what. The question is what we do the, with the calls. The police department, how about the Wake County Sheriff's Department answering calls so far out of town? Is that, it, 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 do you even do stuff like that? Let's, let's let the uh, police chief answer that question. Yeah. Well, I thought me was supposed to know that answer. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, uh, board. To answer that question, generally the, uh, the Sheriff's Department, we have a mutual aid agreement with them. So we work with them. They will support us by, by helping us with, with calls in town if we're tied up. We also support them. If uh, they don't have a deputy close, we might send a deputy outside of our city limits to back them up. But as a general rule, they would not answer calls um, once it's incorporated in the city. But Tim, what I'm getting at, you know, you're so far out of town and it looks like some of these other subdivisions are coming up just <clears throat> way out, and I know our police department is limited, and we have enough to do right here in, in uh, the heart of downtown. Uh, and I pay just as much Wake County taxes as anybody for the sheriff's department, but mm -hmm. why can't we use them where it's just we just don't have the resources? Uh, 
to go way out there and get tied up when we may be needed here for supply. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. That the, the problem is normally, of course, I can't speak for the sheriff's office, but um, for the sheriff's office, they generally have two deputies that work the eastern end of the county. And so um, while the sheriff's office works the entire county, if there's a place that's incorporated, um, they, they certainly, I don't think they would have the manpower to, to take up calls. And that's, it's just generally not the way they work. Once an area is incorporated in town, there's houses built, they will assist us if we need help, but they generally aren't going to answer calls there for service as just a matter of procedure. They do have jurisdiction there. Under mutual aid, they would assist us. Um, but again, oftentimes we have to help uh, the sheriff's office. There might be a call just outside of town on um, one of our, our, our areas right around, maybe even in that area right now. Um, and we'll send officers out there to kind of stabilize a scene or respond to a scene. Uh, while they wait for a deputy to get there because they have an extended response time. Do you see a problem with all these uh, subcommittees and coming so far outside of town? I, I noticed one on Pierce's Road almost <coughs> to the property I own out there. Uh, that's a long ways out there. Uh, it is. Um, you know, we, we patrol uh, out that way to a certain extent. We patrol the, the Mudcat Stadium, U.S. Foods. We handle calls there um, and, and on portions uh, of town uh, near the community center and, and that sort of thing. So it is out a little ways, but um, you know, if, if I, I'm at some point, uh, if we take it in, we'll police it. I think it should be a concern to us, uh, the way we are stretching uh, boundaries. Uh, well, thanks for the information. I understand. Thank you, sir. Any other questions for me? No. Thank you. Any other questions? What's your pleasure? <clears throat> I'll make a motion that we approve RZ 2019-05. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion made. Second. Other comments or discussion? All in favor? And none opposed. Thank you. Appreciate the conversation. Okay, RZ 2019-06, Weaver's Ridge. RZ 2019-06, Weaver's Ridge. The applicant, once again, Stocks Engineering. This property is located on Zebulon Road, roughly 34 acres. Uh, this property was recently annexed, but there was not a zoning designation um, given to the property when it was annexed. The request today is uh, the zoning map amendment to residential 10. The subject property, currently vacant, as I st uh, stated, located on Zebulon Road. It's uh, southwest of the Weaver's Pond development. It's a zoning map. Uh, the Weaver's Pond zoning is residential 13. It's the future land use map. Uh, this designation was uh, outside of the, the corporate limits, but adjacent to Weaver's Pond, which was given a medium density future land use classification uh, timeline exactly similar to what we saw with sydney creek submitted on april 8th uh, mail notices on may 26th notified in the east wake news joint public hearing on june 11th and the planning board recommended approval on june 11th planning staff's recommendation was approval these are pictures from the site visit Uh, this is the same, uh, a similar map to what we saw previously. Weaver's Ponds has had 730 units approved. Uh, Weaver's Ridge, because we'll have a public hearing next week, we kind of have an idea of what they want to do, which is 182 units. Comes out to uh, right about three units an acre. Weaver's Pond is probably about just a little over four units an acre. And the planning board's consistency statement was um, recommending approval of RZ 2019-6 based on the consistency with the Town of Zebulon Comprehensive Plan, Zebulon Code of Ordinances, and any other official plan that is applicable. I'll be glad to an answer any questions. Okay. 
I did? Mm -hmm. Okay. thought maybe he brought something else to your attention. Uh, okay. Any questions? All right. Hearing none. What you want to do? I make a motion we approve RZ 2019-06. And if I may add, when we do, um, if you do recommend approval, uh, adopt the consistency statement that's consistent with what the planning board, what their statement was. Okay. Does that include the consistency statement? It includes the consistency okay. statement. Is there a second to that? Second. <laughs> okay. Motion made and second. Other comments or discussion? All in favor. Motion carries. No opposition. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Right. And then can we revisit RZ 2019 5 and adopt the consistency statement to approve it? Okay. Uh, who made that? Motion? I made the motion, uh, yeah, based on the consistency statement with the town of Zebulon's comprehensive plan. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bumper. To my exactly. motion. Did you say Thank you. I did. Okay, it was me. Second. So you'll second, second this motion. It second. will make it consistent all the way through. Okay. Okay. Other comments or discussion? Yeah, all in favor? And the motion carries. Thank you. No, thank, no, you. thank you. <laughs> all right. Business retention and expansion program. Thank you, Mayor and members of the board. Uh, tonight you will consider the business retention and expansion agreement executed by the Zebulon Chamber of Commerce. I'll provide a little bit of background uh, for the general audience since they have not um, probably been aware of uh, how long this has been developing. But on June 4th, 2018, Zebulon Board of Commissioners adopted the Zebulon 2030 Strategic Plan. This plan identified, uh, quote, vibrant downtown, small town life and growing smart as focus areas foundational to achieving the town's vision of a vibrant growing community that maintains its small town charm and heritage. The growing smart focus area is defined in part to quote, promote economic development, end quote, with a priority goal being to quote, pursue economic development opportunities with our community partners, end quote. During their retreat on February 21st of this year, the board discussed survey results from, a business, from the business community and the potential for a business retention and expansion program to serve as the basis for the community and economic development agreement between the town of Zebulon and the Zebulon Chamber of Commerce. The business retention and expansion agreement is a progressive five-year action plan growing in scope of services focused on retaining existing businesses facilitating growth and expansion, enhancing the business climate, and strength, strengthening the community partnership with local businesses. At their budget work session on May 22nd of this year, the board heard an implementation plan of the programs with each year of the BRE, which is also known as the Business Retention Expansion Program. Examples of first year programs include business visits and assessments, small business concierge, CEO roundtables, and collaborative promotion with our economic development partners, examples being Wake County Economic Development, the Economic Development Partnership of North Carolina and the Greater Raleigh Convention and Visitors Bureau. On June 3rd of this year, when you adopted the budget, you uh, budgeted $35,000 towards this business retention and expansion program. And the discussion before the board tonight is whether to adopt or modify or table the business retention and expansion agreement that's within your agenda packet. I stand ready to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Thank you. Questions? This is really as we discussed it earlier. Uh, no modifications that I, I determined in it. That's correct. Okay. okay. No comments? How about a motion? I make a motion we adopt the business retention and expansion expansion program partnership agreement. Second. Motion made and second. Other comments or discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. No opposition. Thank you. Judge. Thank you. Board appointments. Mayor Matheny and the board, um, we have one opening of in-town vacancy on the planning board. David Covington did not seek reappointment. And we have two 
people interested in that spot, Jessica Luther and Edward Saunders. And then the Board of Adjustment has two vacancies, Larry Laux and Tad Adams have both requested to be reappointed. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about the uh, planning board first. Anyone have any recommendations out of these two? <clears throat> I don't know either one of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we can ask them to come down and speak to us if you'd like to. Yeah, I think I'd like to I'd like to hear that. Okay. Mm. Want to make that the motion? I'd, I'd make a motion for that. Yeah, I'll make a motion that uh, the candidates, that they're interested, come speak to us. Okay. Everybody understand the motion? The motion mm -hmm. is that the candidates come and make a presentation to us because yeah, I'm not familiar with them. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second. Okay. Other comments or discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Now we'll go to the Board of Adjustment. Both current members have asked to be reappointed. Well, I do know those two. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> That's you do know those two. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so. Well, I'll make a, uh, we're going to do each one individually or? No, you can do them jointly. Uh, I'll, I'll make a, a motion that we nominate both of them to uh, Larry Louse and Ted, Ted, Ted Adams to the Board of Adjustments. I'll second that. Okay, motion's made and second. Other comments or discussion? All in favor? And motion carries. Thank you. All right. Personnel policy amendments. That'd be me again. Um, okay. The HR committee is recommending that we amend the personnel policy uh, to allow for full-time employees to use their sick time when they're taking maternity or paternity leave uh, up to 12 weeks uh, if they have the time available. Currently, we do not allow that in our policy. Uh, we're recommending it because it meets the core value of family that we have adopted as well as it is the practice for all other municipalities in Wake County and most in the state. Any questions from the board on this? Yeah, if they, I do. If yes. they um, are gonna take 12 weeks and they do not have that much vacation, can they take time without pay? They can use comp time. Okay. They can use their vacation time. If they have none of time available, none of that time is available, they have to use uh, time without pay or they just don't take that much time off. Okay. The 12 weeks comes <coughs> from what is uh, allowed from FMLA. Thank you. And, and can an employee give them time, give them some of that time? Yes, we do have um, a policy you. where you can um, donate vacation time. Uh -huh. It's anonymous and so it can be donated if someone's chooses to do so, yes. Please, how long do you have to work here before you get that? Um, I should know this. Bef before you uh, become a full-time employee? Well, you're normally hired as a full-time employee. So you become eligible the day you come on. You're eligible for 12 weeks. No, FMLA is, um, is, is federal. So you have to work for the town for one year and you have to work 1,250 hours to be eligible for FMLA. Um, if they wanted to take 12 weeks off and they had this much time, they could still do that and they would be eligible um, to take time off after they've been here six months. Okay, other questions? Pleasure. I make a motion we approve the personnel policy amendment. Second. Motion made and second. Other comments or discussion? All in favor? And the motion carries. Thank you. Fire truck funding agreement. Good evening again. I come to you tonight to consider Fire truck funding and agreements. Um, just to give a, just a short background, if you recall, the town purchased a ladder truck and a pumper truck last fiscal year, um, and that was purchased with the intent that Wake County would provide funding uh, to assist with the purchase of those vehicles. The funding agreement 
to make that actually happen came to us very, very late in the fiscal year. So uh, we brought, bring that for you tonight for consideration. And I'll answer any questions. There are, uh, there's a separate agreement for each vehicle um, that match up with the years that the two vehicles were financed. How did the county figure, I know they got 20%. How did they come up with that number on the ladder truck? On the ladder truck. So the ladder truck, um, the current contract says that they will fund portions of our rescue vehicle, our rescue truck. Historically, it's been a rescue truck. So we replaced our rescue truck with a ladder. So they based their funding on their allotment for rescue trucks, not for ladder trucks. So that's why we see an amount that is a little bit less than what we typically see um, had we just bought a rescue truck, we would have seen our, our typical call share, but it was based on the, their current rescue truck model, not the ladder truck model, because that's what they're obligated to pay part of. I'm sure they're not open for discussion of modification of that arrangement. The, um, they weren't at this time. I, I think we'll see that in the future. That won't help us out in this case, unfortunately, but um, our contract with them is up in this coming year. Um, so I, I am sure that's already been brought up that they want to look at how capital purchases are, are shared and those costs, because there's some costs that um, they pay for entirely. Um, so as the old, the, excuse me, the current contract requires that, that the town fund ladder trucks entirely. So now they've kind of opened the door to doing some things a little bit differently. So I think we'll see that in a, an upcoming contract change. Well, for the sake of the audience, the reason that they give us anything is because of the fact that we service their, we contract to service their fire district. There's not an independent fire district fire department anymore. That's correct. So uh, they, they share the cost because of that. So, and the fire district pays fire tax in town, we don't. So anyway, that's how it works out. But what annoys me is that some of the uh, fire districts that uh, or self-contained, if you will, they get a lot more money than we get. Mm -hmm. and I'm just not sure that's fair. Yes, our, our funding from the county is, is based very strictly off their funding formulas, yeah. which doesn't always work in our, in, no, in our favor. I understand that. I'm just banning. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, okay. I protest. <laughs> Anybody else have a question on uh, the ladder truck? If not, is there a motion to adopt the funding agreement for the ladder truck? So moved. Second. Other comments or discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Pumper. The next item I have for you to consider is our what I've labeled as a radio interoperability solution. We didn't do the pumper. pumper truck. I'm sorry. We did not do the pumper. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I don't know. You're like me. You're trying to get jump ahead. No, I, I, I don't mean to rush you at all. I promise. <laughs> Got you. Okay, do you have any more comments? No, on the it, everything I said applies equally to the pumper except for the cost share measure. Yeah, the percentage is 35% uh, on the pumper. So, what happened to the 40%, Chris? So what you see on the pumper, um, the county bases somewhat similarly, they base their funding of fire trucks based on what the county is paying for their fire trucks. Um, for the fiscal year, um, they bought a much less expensive truck than they have bought in the past and probably less expensive than they'll buy in the future um, based on some of the results that have happened with that. But whatever the current vehicle that they're purchasing there that year, that's what they base um, their funding on. So what they did was they applied the, our typical cost share to their funding price. And then what that does when you do the math, it ends up to about 30, uh, whatever you saw there, 30%. 35 percent of the vehicle that we actually purchased it used to be 50 50 didn't it yes sir about um four or five years ago it was 50 50 yeah. yes sir mm. okay other questions there motion? So, okay. So move. <laughs> okay so the motion is to approve so the funding agreement for on engine the pump 91. Truck. Mm -hmm. okay. second made in second any other comments or discussion? All in favor? And motion carries. Thank you. Now, radio. Now I can talk about radios. There we go. Sorry for, for, for pushing that along. Um, the radio interoperability solution for your consideration tonight, um, just to give you just a, a bit of background, um, the 
Emergency services, the police and fire have operated for a number of years off the Wake County's emergency radio system, the 800 megahertz system, um, which provides interoperability with all the uh, law enforcement, fire, EMS, we can all talk uh, interoperable within ourselves and it, and it works very well across the county. Town resources, namely public works, parks and rec, um, those agencies have functioned off of another radio system that was, um, there's, the town has had its own radio system for a number of years. The most, the most uh, recent, the system that's in place now has been in place for a number of years as well. Um, and when it comes to those two radio systems talking together, it's almost like an oil and water kind of thing. One is 800 megahertz, one is um, VHF or the 154 megahertz, 155 megahertz range. So the, the two radios just don't talk. And we've, um, to, to put it in a word, we've gotten by with it that way for a number of years. Um, we, we've, we've looked at the options of trying to buy, put everybody on one system or the other, but it's just for either cost reasons or feasibility or operational reasons um, they just, it's not a feasible way to look at it. What has happened to us in, in most recently, when the tornado came through our area, um, our, uh, our desire to try to make it work really came to light as our backup plan was our cellular network. And we had a major cellular failure through the tornado that it came through. And that really brought to light the fact that we need a, the ability for, for all of our staff employees, uh, our staff to be able to communicate to each other especially in the time of an emergency or disaster. Um, we could use the system likewise through um, special events, <coughs> Christmas parades, downtown celebrations, what have you. But uh, something that I guess is just a little bit more near and dear to me is, is response to emergencies when, when things are really bad. And we, we've always used our cell phones as a backup. And when our cell phones failed during the recent tornado event, it just shown a, lot, a big light that we really, it's a situation we really need to address. So we contacted some of our radio vendors and, and what you have for consideration is a solution that will allow these two radio systems um, to talk to each other. Um, and the, the proposal is there in front of you. It's a budget item of, of $21,200 to provide the technology that allows these two radio systems to coordinate seamlessly between each other. Um, and I guess the best thing for at this point would be to answer any questions that you may have. I recall when we were went to 800 megahertz and, uh, there was a lot of discussion that you would be able to talk with the, the sheriff's department highway patrol i mean all of that at the town of windell for example all of that is still capable within that system so it, i want to be sure that i'm right this is just the last piece for us there's nothing else out there that is exactly right. To, to your point, um, the, the communications, emergency communications within the county is very, very solid um, between those other municipalities like you discuss, uh, discussed. The, this piece is kind of the, the final piece for us locally. Um, we are also working now to make sure our radio system communicates outside of the county, Johnston, Franklin, Nash, and we're having very, very good success with making that work as well. But you're right, this is the last piece that kind of puts all of us talking. Um, there was many, many years that um, uh, officials would go around with five and six different radios and say, we want to fix it where all these people can talk together. Well, for us here in town, this is the last piece that puts us all talking together on radios. How many channels do we have? So on the, on the town system, it is currently at two channels and can be expanded to more. On the county system, oof, it's hundreds of talk groups that, that we can talk back and forth. So um, it leverages some of that. The, the system that we're proposing allows us to connect that dynamically to wherever we need. Well, the reason I ask that question, if you think about, and I'm not opposed to this, by the way, mm -hmm. I just want sure. to be informed. Sure. Uh, if, if the recreation department is talking on a channel, are they going to be stepping on the police department, for example, or right. the fire department, that sort of thing? Right. Not at all. So the, um, when the system, and part of this is probably what you're thinking about, when the, the emergency system was designed, it was designed with the capability to take on local government radio communications as well should a local municipality decide to do that. Unfortunately, it's just very expensive. That's an option, but it's a very expensive option. So, for example, if I was to show you my radio today, there's a talk group in there that says Zebulon Public Works. We don't use it, but, it, but that capability is there. So our intent is to tie 
the public works radio system they use today to those talk groups within the system, and they won't interfere with our existing communications at all. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Sure. Anybody else have a question? Yes, yeah, so, so if we have a, a natural disaster emergency, does everybody go to, go to this one channel? So is that what? How do you? So we're going to, the, the system will be set up in, in, in what I would call a day-to-day -day mode, which is unfortunately also turns out to be, you know, something just, a tornado just happened or whatever. So we know that, that in my radio, I can flip to the, the channel and I can call um, Chris Ray's guys and say, hey, we need a backhoe over here. Or they can call us and say, hey, we need a fire crew over here. We need a police officer because that's already, just, today that does not exist. Um, but should we need it for like a special event or something? And the best example I can always think of is the Christmas parade because the police department brings in law enforcement agencies from all over the area to help man the Christmas parade. We can reroute those radios so that they talk to each other, um, even from people from other areas. Well, being retired from, the, from public service, um, uh, communication is very important. Yes, sir. Uh, it, it's one of the biggest tools you can have in an emergency. So with that, I make a motion with Dr. Ordinance 20. 2021. Second. second. Motion made. Second. Other comments or discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Chief. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right. Planning. SE 201701 Edmund Street. <clears throat> Just realized it probably should have sat closer tonight. This is part two of the, um, the discussion regarding Eden Street, um, specifically being that there was no um, additional public <coughs> comment. Um, staff can recommend approval of uh, the uh, resolution 2020-01, finding that, is, that is in, or it is consistent with General Statute 168-299 and is consistent with the current 2008 Comprehensive Plan, specifically Policy 3 within the Transportation Section. Um, and I am available if you have any questions. So what happens to that property, Michael? It would become private property and per the agreement that was recorded, it'd be part of um, uh, Wakefield Central Baptist Church and they have intentions of making further parking improvements as well as access drive improvements. Doesn't the property split down the middle? Typically that would be correct, That's but part of, this agreement, uh, part of this agreement, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, the church would acquire the entirety of the parcel that's being vacated, or okay. the uh, right away that's being vacated. Yeah, I knew the split was typical. Yeah. So, okay, thank you. Other questions? All right, is there a motion? I make a motion we adopt resolution 202001. Second. Motion made, second. Other comments or discussion? All in favor? Motion carries, thank you. All right, Public Works, Streetscape Match Grant Request. Good evening, Mayor, uh, members of the board. Uh, tonight we come before you with a street grant uh, request grant from Zevin, uh, from Preservation Zevin, excuse me. Uh, to date we have six civic groups that are currently on our Welcome to uh, Zevin downtown sign. Uh, since drafting of this board, there's a picture in your report that shows two blank circles on the bottom of the thing. Since we drafted that, the ZDAC uh, logo has been placed on it and also the Miss Zevin sign. Ms. Um, Ms. Evelyn's uh, logo has been placed there. Uh, tonight we come before you to request to expand the sign for allow additional civic groups to participate and re request the street grant skate match to be extended to Zevlin Preservation. For some reason, I'm not able to pull up the pictures. Can you put them on the screen here? I do not have those. I can show you the logo uh, or show you my report, sir. I don't know why, it just went cold on me. My question is, you're talking about these? Yes, sir, on the outside, yes, sir. I'm assuming that there's a, a, a board or something put out here and then these are attached to it from the front. Couldn't they come in from the side and we do them as, they, as people want them? 
we the way our side manufacturers recommended us that we do three we could do one on, on each uh we could do a three on one side and three on the other because he's putting them all together in, in a i guess top to bottom location um he that's why he's recommended installing them yes potentially yes we could go back for redesign and, and do them one at a time if that's something you would like well the only reason i say that is that the board's having empty ones up there mm -hmm. that, or we could do three at one time just do three and then wait to the other if we get some additional demand it's whatever the board's pleasure is. No, I understand. I'm not trying to be hard to get along with here. It just seems to me that it's better not to have blank ones Understood. hanging up there because we don't know how long they'd be there. And yeah. I don't find those to be particularly appealing Okay. if, if they're blank. That's all. Uh, you can have this back. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. So you're talking about, Chris, we can leave them like they are at the bottom right now? Right. Uh, I agree with you. I, I think this looks a lot better. Do these one at a time. See? No, I don't like that. Well, no, these are already spoken for. Them. All, all of the bottom ones are spoken for. That is correct, sir. So we're talking the... about add-ons here Okay, here. I, I saw two blank ones right oh, there. Oh, they are. That's when that picture was made. But yes. Since these are add-ons, right? Yeah, these will be additional. The picture you have, we have filled them since the drafting so of this report. Is that right? Indeed, that's what I was saying is put them on as... As they, come in. as they come in to avoid having blank ones here. Yeah. I'm not going to lose any sleep over them one way or the other. It's just, you know, it seems I, to I was just saying, that, I, I can't get the... You could put the mounting board and not put the, the circle on it, couldn't you? Uh, potentially, yes, sir. I don't see any reason why we could not do that. I, don't know I mean, we have some flexibility. It's whatever the board desires. No, I realize that. I'm just trying to talk it through, and mm -hmm. the board may not want to do any of that. They may just say, <laughs> let's go with it the way it is, and that's fine, too. But. I was trying to get some other other ideas out there of ways. To well, I don't it. think we ought to have a blank board up there. So. <coughs> blank board. Yeah, I don't you, think we'd rather order. have the blank circle. <coughs> well, I'd rather uh, do the That's one what, do the one at a time or whatever time. instead of having. Yeah, if you got two, do a... Yeah, just stagger them. Yeah, do one at, uh, do them as they come in or as y'all approve them. Okay, we can do that. Yeah. Right. I think we're talking about the same thing. I think now. so. Yeah. So we're talking about putting them on one at a time as they come in. Yes, sir. We can do it. We can make that modification. I mean, I, like I said, I don't want to see one side is good. Then you got right blank sides. And that's on. exactly where where yeah, I was. That's coming what I'm from. saying. So we're exactly we're exactly on the same page on that one. Okay. Will you make that a motion, too? Yeah, I'll make that a motion. Okay. Is there a second? I'll go make a second. Other comments or discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, the next item we got before us tonight is a um, we, we request your approval of the construction fund agreement with the North Carolina Department of Transportation. Uh, your staff has been successful in securing a Greenway grant for congestion, congestion mitigation and air quality that has been administered by NCDOT. Uh, this grant is for $1.6 million. Uh, to date, your staff has raised grants uh, totaling $1.924 million toward the construction of the Beaver Dam, Green, Beaver, Beaver Dam Creek Greenway. I'll get it out correctly in a minute. Uh, this NCDOT grant we got in front of you asking for your approval is very similar to the project we did on North Arundel for the ARA project for the sidewalks, Shepherd School Road. is very similar to our North Arundel access and operational uh, grant that we have recently received. Um, Staff has also included a construction schedule for your review uh, in the packet, and staff recommends the approval of the agreement and budget amendment 2020-22. Be glad to answer any questions you have. All right, this doesn't include around um, what is it, what, the, the pond there, does it? What we have done in this uh, proposal, uh, we are bidding the, the lower loop as an alternate. And since we have some excess funds uh, come available to us, so we're going to bid that. We'll be back to you in February to award that bid. And at that time, you'll have the opportunity to award the base bid, which is the northern piece, or an alternate, which is the bottom loop. So we'll give you that opportunity to decide if you want to include that at your Fe February, March meeting time frame. Mm -hmm. Okay, other questions or comments? <clears throat> This one's been a long time coming, Chris. Yes, sir. Uh, staff's worked hard on this one, and I think this is going to be a great step toward our walkability program that the board has initiated. So 
We appreciate your help on the uh, Campo board to help support us for this, sir. I'd like, yeah, I'd like to make the motion on uh, Ordinance 2020-22, the Beaver Dam Creek Greenway Phase 1. Second. Motion made and second. Other comments or discussion? All in favor? And motion carried. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Board comments. Dale? Talk to you. Uh, no, I don't have anything. Uh, just maybe a... a <clears throat> comment in regards to uh, what transpired this past weekend. I think probably uh, it would be appropriate for us all to be in prayer for the uh, folks out in El Paso, Texas and Dayton, Ohio, and in remembrance that it could be us next week. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, I'd like to answer Scott's question. So did we, didn't we post all the dates for the UDO at one time? Yes, sir, we did. They were on the calendar. Okay, and so he can come down here and get, get that. Is it posted downstairs? Um, they're, they're on the calendar. There was no other posting. They were posted on the kiosks at the bottom of the stairs as well. The agendas were at that point. Okay. And the agendas are online as well. Okay. All right, um, with regard to Little River, it's still hanging out there, Scott. Uh, you know, we have uh, approached the county about their involvement and we're just riding it out right now. Uh, I, I wish I could tell you more, but that's basically <laughs> as good as I can get, but we continue to, to work uh, in those areas. Okay. Uh, Joe, manager's report. Yes, I wanted to um, announce to the board some of the topics for their upcoming work sessions and also for the benefit of the audience as well. The August work session, which will be on the 21st at 7 o'clock in this room, is going to focus on uh, downtown utilities. Ms. Alford uh, talked about um, a specific example of that, but this more broadly probably is another example of something that the board undertook to three years ago, where they incentivized participation by the private sector through, uh, by funding the facade grant program. And they incentivized a participation in partnership with the nonprofit sector by funding the streetscape match program. So there might be an opportunity to have another partnership uh, um, opportunity with downtown utilities, but we need to have a work session so we can have an understanding of what, what the nature of the problem is understand if there is a public-private partnership opportunity there. Uh, the September work session is on September 18th, uh, same time, seven o'clock in, um, in this room. We um, will present a draft of the Unified Development Ordinance uh, before the board so we can get some additional comments on that before we start routing it through the planning board and then ultimately uh, before the full governing board. And then finally, I would, I would be remiss if I didn't take my opportunity to announce the movie for this month is Leap. It's August 16th at 7 p.m. at the community center. And once again, popcorn's free. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. I thank you folks for being here tonight. I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion to motion adjourn. Second. To adjourn. <clears throat>